Wyoming Senator John Brasso is chairman of the Senate Republican Conference and ranking member of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee he joins us now. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. So I don't know. Is this a president that's showing that he means business when it when it comes to bringing down oil and gas prices in this country, Senator? No, this is all about affordable energy. That's what the American people are concerned about. And I've been traveling all around the state of Wyoming and continuing to run into people who are too many who are living with this nightmare of having to choose gas they can't afford, groceries they can't afford, heating their homes, which they can't afford. Gas is $1.50 a gallon more today than it was the day that Joe Biden came into office. But when you take a look at this radical climate agenda that Joe Biden and every Democrat is for, if they're allowed to continue in control in, in Washington, we're all going to be left cold, in the dark, and hungry. So people are suffering. They're falling further and further behind in this, uh, in this Joe Biden economy. And what we just need to do is to make sure come Election Day, we get the Republicans in the House and the Republicans in the Senate if we want energy that is affordable, available, and reliable. The Democrats are against that. They like to see the price of energy up, forces more people to electric vehicles. Okay, so... Uh that was the president earlier this morning uh, vowing consequences on Saudi Arabia. But I want to play this of President Biden in a brand new interview. Uh, it aired yesterday, also promising consequences. Listen. There's going to be some consequences for what they've done with Russia. What kind of consequences? Menendez says suspend all arms sales. Is that something you'd consider? I'm not going to get into what I'd consider and what I have in mind, but there will be there will be consequences. OK, so that's the president. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Uh, he's got members of his own party, Dick Durbin, saying the Saudis can't be trusted. He says, I would just advise the president if he asked that we've all learned a lesson from Saudi Arabia in the last week or so, uh, that they cannot be trusted. He tried his best to reach out to him and it didn't work, said Dick Durbin. And I think he's having second thoughts about a relationship, and I certainly am, too. I think bottom line, the question is, why are we turning to Saudi Arabia in this capacity, when we have so many of our own resources right here at home. You, you are 100 percent right. It's not Saudi Arabia that's holding a gun to our head or OPEC. It is Joe Biden who's holding a gun to the head of the American people when it comes to energy. We can never expect OPEC to provide us energy that is affordable, available or reliable. We have it here in the ground. Sandra, today we're producing 2 million barrels a day, less than we should be. And it's because the Democrat policies, which are not allowing us to explore for that energy, not allowing us to use the infrastructure. And when OPEC came up with their decision and the White House was so panicked, as you said, it wasn't because they were going to cut. It's because they were going to do it now and the elections are coming. Mm. They didn't say don't cut. They said, hey, wait a month to make the decision because they knew it was going to drive up prices. And this group, OPEC Plus, the plus is Russia. That means Russia's in the huddle when they get together and call the plays. The president was once again, no surprise to your viewers, caught flat-footed. You know, in Ro Khanna, uh, the Democrat from California, was on with us earlier on this program. And we thank him for coming on. But it's hard, it, it's hard to see the constant blame everywhere but the White House policies that are driving these energy prices higher. In fact, I wrote it down as he said it because he placed blame on Saudi Arabia, the Federal Reserve, and Vladimir Putin, but not the current White House policies. Let's listen to, to, to Ro Khanna. First, I blame the Saudis. I mean, they are totally outrageous and ungrateful in cutting production. I do blame the Fed. They were buying back corporate bonds and mortgages for way too long. And I blame Putin's war, which has aggravated supply chains and, of course, the pandemic, which did that. that. So I guess my question is, if we have an administration uh, that can't acknowledge what got us here, how can we expect them to fix it? Well, you're right. The Democrats have ignored the fundamental truth that we are better and stronger as a nation if we are selling our energy to our friends than having to buy it from our enemies. But that's the position the Democrats have put us in by basically taking us from energy dominance that we were before Joe Biden came into office to energy dependence today. And American families are suffering when they go to the gas station and try to pay for gas. And I think the prices are going to continue to go up all the way through elections. And you're right, we need to be using American energy. We have it here. We have the know-how to how to, how to get it, how to use it. That will bring down the prices 
for us here at home right. and make others around the world less dependent upon the bad guys, which is where we are now. All right. We all keep covering it. Senator, thank you very much for joining us on that. Thanks, Andrew. Mike.